We have been looking at some of the highs and lows thus far of 2021, crunching the numbers on the best and worst performers. And within the NASDAQ 100, there is one stock that stands out as the worst performer of the year. That stock is Peloton. We have seen it go through some trials this year, including a recall of its uh, tread product. And more recently, the situation with the Sex in the City uh, spinoff or sequel, I guess you could call it. Our next guest, though, says it's time for the stock to recover. That's Paul Golding, Macquarie Group Senior U.S. Lifestyle and Payments Analyst. Paul, thanks for being here. Um, what do you think is going to turn around here for Peloton? Because indeed, it has had a rough go of it this year. Well, it's great to be with you. Uh, we look at Peloton as a story of what they've built at this point. This is a globally recognized luxury brand with a, a vast uh, manufacturing and shipping and logistics uh, framework. Uh, and we think that the market is discounting that. Shares have been under pressure. They're trading at about uh, you know, two times EV to sales on FY23 by our estimates. And, and we have an $85 target price, which is about 4.7 times. And we think that's more indicative of a, a subscription business as well as a, a hardware business, as opposed to a, a, a two times EV to sales multiple on 23, which was maybe more for just a, a strictly hardware business. And so when you look at, at a, a subscription business like, like Peloton's with uh, its member base and its, uh, its subscription contribution margin, we just think that uh, at these levels, it's undervalued. Yeah, the, the decline, Paul, has been really striking and, and the operational miscues at Peloton, I mean, they've been well documented. Do you think it would be better off if Peloton is under a larger company, a larger company that can help get through this next series of growth uh, that it's likely headed down? I, I can't comment to uh, M&A, but what I can say about the scale that Peloton has built so far, uh, they've vertically integrated their manufacturing in uh, acquiring their uh, tonic uh, uh, manufacturing facility in, in Taiwan. Uh, they're, they've acquired Precore uh, and its manufacturing facilities in the US, uh, and they are in the process of building another manufacturing facility in the US. And so when you think about uh, their ability to scale in their current form, uh, they have taken action to uh, scale and that uh, over time, in our view, should facilitate uh, their ability to produce incremental SKUs, incremental product verticals. So uh, the, the bike vertical that they have right now, uh, the tread vertical that they relaunched with, uh, with getting the, the Consumer Protection uh, Bureau on board to allow them to sell the tread again, uh, and with uh, future SKUs, whether it's the, the guide that they've already announced for uh, early 2022 or SKUs that they haven't announced yet. Um, so, you know, Sazi just asked if maybe there could be a different owner. I would ask if there should be a different management. I'm curious what your opinion of the management is. I think there were, were a lot of questions about management after the sort of brush off of the initial concerns about the tread. Um, there were also questions about the media appearance of the Peloton in that Sex in the City show and why the company didn't know about it, et cetera. Do, do you have confidence in the management here? Well, I think for, for the market's purposes and the step down in uh, the November call uh, for uh, the, the result. Uh, the, the guidance and the internal forecast uh, was the, the main trigger there on that downward pressure in terms of bringing in uh, expectations for this fiscal year uh, versus prior expectations. And I, I think that's just a matter of getting uh, the process uh, refined. We've talked in our, in our research about how we're still cautious about the guide as it finds its footing and this process finds its, its footing. But we've also said that they've come out of a very volatile time. This is COVID uh, with acute demand for their product. And uh, that pretty much started within one or two quarters of, uh, of their public launch, uh, their IPO. And so when you think about 
a good baseline for management to work off of in terms of forecasting, they've had a, a, a pretty uh, unique time to go through that doesn't necessarily uh, help in uh, forecasting consistently. And so I think it's just a matter of more time, more refining and more consistent demand and, and supply uh, trends going forward. And Paul, there's been, uh, there's been a lot of new competitors into this marketplace uh, over the past year, whether it's in the bike category, treadmill category, everything seems to be connected. How concerned are you about those new entrants? Well, this goes back to our comment on, on scale. Uh, Peloton's brand, its, uh, it, its lifestyle and wellness affinity among the consumer base, uh, and, and its scale now in terms of manufacturing and shipping and, and delivery to, to deliver these products. I think all of that, and as well as its media, right? It's, it's streaming this content and it has a vast archive. All of that scale goes to, uh, uh, in our view, uh, its ability to compete in this marketplace uh, despite new entrants, despite competition. Uh, and even its, its instructors, uh, they're in a sense, a new celebrity class. And so all of these things in our view reinforce Peloton as a brand and as a platform that is aspirational uh, for, for customers looking to get involved in, in this space and the streaming fitness space. Well, we'll see if we can turn it around uh, going into 2022 for Peloton. Paul, thanks for being here. Happy New Year to you. Paul Golding is Macquarie Group Senior U.S. Lifestyle and Payments Analyst.